With DC's Absolute Universe in full swing, it's time for Absolute Wonder Woman to step into the spotlight and impress readers with her fighting prowess. Fans of the classic Diana know her skills well, but this new version brings something completely different to the table, with abilities that set her apart in a compelling way. Her first fight in this new universe teases her darker origins and powers, which is something that leaves to be desired about this new iteration. In the preview for Absolute Wonder Woman issue 1 by Kelly Thompson, Hayden Sherman, Jordi Belair, and Becca Carey, the action kicks off immediately as horrifying creatures burst out of a mysterious inverted triangle-shaped UFO attacking the people of Gateway City. As civilians flee in fear, a mysterious figure races into battle to protect them, and that is when we see this universe's Wonder Woman riding a skeletal pegasus into the fray and using dark magic to take down the monsters. When Absolute Wonder Woman was first announced, I felt a strong connection to it right away. Plus, when I heard that Kelly Thompson and Hayden Sherman were working on Absolute Wonder Woman, it immediately grabbed my attention. Right on the heels of Absolute Batman, Thompson and Sherman crafted a truly unique setting for Wonder Woman, which was no small feat. So, how did our favorite Amazonian princess end up being the Princess of Hell? Without wasting another moment, let's get right to it. But, before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. How does Absolute Wonder Woman The Last Amazon begin? So, the comic takes us to Gateway City, California, where a reporter and his cameraman are documenting a weird phenomenon of an unknown object floating over the city's coast. This object is a brown-colored inverted triangle with multiple holes in it. Just as the local police and the military are about to evacuate the civilians from the area, thousands of red-colored hellish creatures fly out of the multiple holes from the floating object and start attacking the people. As the civilians start to panic, the reporter turns back to see a masked individual flying through the sky on a skeletal pegasus. This person is fully clad in black and red armor with the classic Wonder Woman W stuck on their chest. The eyes of their mask is glowing a shade of glowing red, and when the critters from hell try to attack her, she draws her gigantic sword and begins to kill many of them in just one swipe. We soon find out that this individual is a princess with the gifts of beauty, grace, compassion, kindness, and wisdom. She gets down from the pegasus, touches the ground, and smears some of the blood on her hand across her face. Now this is no common princess for she has the ability to outrun a hellhound while conjuring the darkest of magic tricks. With that, she raises her hands, utters an incantation, and sets off a mind-boggling explosion that knocks back thousands of those evil red fly critters. But these are certain powers every princess needs if they are raised in hell, for she is absolute Wonder Woman, the last Amazon, Princess of Hell, and the Witch of the Wild Isle. How did Diana end up in Hell? So, many years ago, the Wild Isle of Hell was a solitary prison for a great sorceress named Circe, who once ruled a remote paradise called Aea. One day, while cursing the irony of her fate and foraging through the solitary wasteland, Circe is almost blinded by a glowing light as strong as the sun. Next we know, Apollo, the god of sun and light, appears before her, floating in the sky while emanating a bright glowing light. After seeing that Circe is still defiant as ever, Apollo hands her a baby and declares her as the child's new ward. Now why would anyone bring a baby to hell, she thinks. And, so, Apollo clarifies that this baby was Diana, the princess of Themyscria. She is the last of the Amazon and was taken away from them by his father Zeus as a punishment for their crimes against the gods. Now that hell is her new home, Diana will never be reunited with her Amazon sisters, who will be imprisoned for eternity after their service to Zeus ends. It does not take long for Circe to realize that Apollo was somewhat afraid of the little baby. Even though he tried to hide his fear, it only made it obvious when Apollo ordered Circe to never utter the word Amazon again. He then passes a decree and bans the word altogether, which means every time Circe would try to say the word out loud, it would be muffled and nobody would be able to understand what she was trying to say. Circe then asks Apollo what if the baby dies in hell but in typical Greek god fashion, he responds that the gods could not care less. Sorry excuse for a sun god indeed. After he left, Circe began thinking how she was no mother, and since she was not tasked with keeping the baby alive, the child would simply have to take care of itself. And as it turns out, the child can take care of itself. When a snake approaches to attack the baby, little Diana holds the snake by its head and yeets it away. She then crawls out of her crib and notices an orange lizard who breathes fire into her face after feeling vulnerable. 
The fire does not hurt baby Diana, and instead of hurting the lizard, she picks it up, kisses it on the head, and calms it down. As the princess of Themyscira grew up, plenty of things in hell tried to kill her, but there was no overwhelming force of creatures bent on her destruction, because surprisingly, Diana had a certain quality that softened even the most terrifying beasts. Every demon, lost soul, or little creature she came across in hell ended up falling in love with her and became her friends. In fact, even Circe began loving her, because raising a child inevitably means falling in love with it. She taught Diana how to read and write and told her stories of fact, fiction, and magic. Together, they made a loving home even in hell. But as Diana grew, she started asking questions. One day, while reading a book in front of the fireplace, she asks her mother about the forbidden word. At first, she believes that the word does not exist, but Circe assures her that the word would be real only if she says it out loud. As the years pass by, Circe starts teaching Diana the secrets of sorcery and magic. Meanwhile, the Wild Isle keeps having visits from more aggravating creatures, which Diana always manages to tackle with her growing powers and kindness. One day, as a grown Diana was reading a book, Circe looks at her with loving eyes and realizes that now the time has come to let her go in order for her to meet her true destiny. The first battle in Absolute Wonder Woman, the comic takes us to the present day, where the Princess of Hell, Diana, asks a common soldier to go up to his superior and inform him about evacuating all civilians within a mile because the flying red critters she blasted before were not actually dead. These creatures were only stunned by the blast and are actually harbingers of the doom that is yet to arrive. Before Diana could explain anything else to the soldier, a demonic kaiju-sized monster appears out of nowhere. This red demon is apparently Harbinger Prime who is come to take Earth for himself, but Diana warns him that Earth would defend itself and he would have to fight her mythical Athena blade which was forged by Hephaestus himself. Before her sword sends him to his maker, she warns the beast to go back to whoever sent him because this world was protected by her. And then a power-packed battle begins as Diana uses her sword and hand as a shield to deflect anything that the monster sends her way. But when she tried to hold him and utter an incantation to send him away, the red monster blasts her with his laser eyes, leaving her incarcerated for the time being. As the monster instructs his pterodactyl critters to rise and sow chaos on Earth, Diana goes in for another attack. This time, she deflects the demonic entity's laser blasts and in fact reflects it back to him. Unfortunately, this really pisses him off and in retaliation, the monster goes full-blown crazy with his blast, pelting Diana miles away. The blast seriously injured our heroine, and as she lies in a bed of ashes, the comic takes us on a flashback to the Wild Isle, where Diana asks Cersei about the forbidden word once again. When she confesses being scared of the word, Cersei assures her that Diana was not afraid of the word, she was afraid of the change saying it out loud would bring. But how can Diana know a word without even having heard of it before? How can this word beat in her chest so powerfully without knowing what it even means? Cersei then encourages her to say the word out loud in order to know that this word was her identity. When Diana utters Amazon for the first time, it almost feels like uttering her true heritage empowers her. Cersei then tells her the entire truth of how banned the word when he first gave Diana to her as the gods did not want the child to ever find out who she was. When Diana was still confused, Cersei told her that the Amazons had a job to do and protected the world above from ancient monsters who only wanted to feast on it. Cersei then pushes Diana to embrace her true identity, and so, the princess keeps repeating Amazon again and again. The comic then shifts back to the present day, where a seemingly defeated Diana rises from a pile of ashes and pulls out her glowing red lasso after screaming the word, Amazon! When the red kaiju-sized demon is about to claim Earth for itself and threatens to kill Diana if she tries to stop him, the princess of hell rises from the ground and channels all her powers at once. Absolute Wonder Woman. The last Amazon ends as we see Diana become who she was always meant to. She challenges the demon by claiming herself to be Diana of Themyscira, last of the Amazons, daughter of Circe, Princess of Hell, Witch of the Wild Isle, and Harbinger Prime's worst nightmare. So, that was the origin story of how Absolute Wonder Woman went from being an Amazon princess to the Princess of Hell. Now let's discuss what makes this iteration of Wonder Woman's physiological feats stand out from the rest. Wonder Woman's Sword of Athena is her signature weapon in the Absolute Universe. Wonder Woman has always been a powerhouse in the DC Universe, but in the Absolute Universe, she has been reimagined with a stronger focus on magic. Seeing her ride in on a ghostly horse, decked out in full armor and wielding a sword straight out of an anime, is truly an epic sight. Plus, ever since her reveal, there has been a lot of buzz about her massive sword 
and seeing it in action makes it clear that magic plays a huge role in how it works. Diana summons the sword from a small pouch on her side, which glows with mystical energy. The pouch seems to have no limit because of its supernatural nature. As a witch in this universe, Wonder Woman can pull off some incredible feats, and that pouch is just the beginning. However, Diana's sword as her signature weapon really amps up the intensity, making Absolute Wonder Woman a lot more hardcore compared to her main universe counterpart. As heavy and powerful as it looks, it seems like this Athena blade can cut through anything, given it was forged by Hephaestus himself. In fact, she even used it as a shield to deflect a laser blast from Harbinger Prime. Where does Absolute Wonder Woman's magic come from? In this universe, Wonder Woman's magic isn't limited to just her gear, she can also cast spells herself. Take one of her classic moves, for example, in the main universe, she deflects bullets with her bracelets. But in the Absolute continuity, when creatures come flying at her, she raises her arms, chants an incantation, and unleashes an explosion that sends them all flying back to the ground. This puts her among one of DC's most powerful magic users, and it's exciting to think Think about what other spells and enchanted items she has up her sleeve. We already know that this version of Diana grew up in Hell and has some pretty serious magical powers, most of which were taught to her by Circe, who is a sorceress herself. In such crazy changes, it is easy to forget that when Wonder Woman slams her gauntlets together, causing a powerful energy blast, it scatters the creatures, leading us straight into the credits page with a bang. So yes, she is absolutely a witch. She may not be the most powerful witch in the world, like Zatanna might be when she eventually shows up in the Absolute Universe, but it's still a big part of who she is. While Diana's magic isn't the only thing that defines her, it is now a core element of her background, shaping how she was raised by her mother and what they had to endure in the hellish world she grew up in. The comic is not trying to downplay it as she uses magic from the very first issue and will continue to do so. For example, she has the pouch that holds her sword, and it's completely magic. Based with infinite space or some kind of portal inside, given she also pulls out her glowing red lasso from it. Absolute Wonder Woman looks a lot different from her mainstream counterpart. Whatever it is, I think Witch Warrior Wonder Woman might be the coolest version of Diana we have seen in decades. Not only was she raised in hell as a witch warrior, but her new look screams pure badass. She now has a striking ox blood red tattoo, wields a massive greatsword, and rocks a fresh costume that could be one of her best yet. Instead of her classic red, blue, and gold armor, she's decked out in a red, black, and silver outfit. Her usual gladiator skirt has been swapped for red and black pants with a skirt-like accessory, paired with thigh-high black boots and matching shoulder pauldrons. And the most jaw-dropping detail is surely the fact that she rides an undead winged horse which perfectly ties into her hellish backstory. I think they even made her hair curlier than the mainstream version of Diana. The only thing that stuck by was her makeup and the classic black lipstick, which I think really tied into the whole witchy vibe. Everything in Diana's roster is befitting for a princess of hell, and naturally, I am super excited to see what the other four issues of this comic have in store for us all. Marvelous Verdict I think Kelly Thompson does a fantastic job of tapping into Diana's emotional background, helping us connect with her character. She draws from the same character mold that George Perez established in his original Wonder Woman series back in the late 80s, which introduced us to a young, emotional hero who was navigating the challenges of growing up and leaving home for the first time. By exploring Diana's connection with Cersei and her struggle to understand her identity, Thompson created an emotional portrayal that honors Diana's roots in the main continuity while also making her feel fresh and unique in this new universe. Coming to the art, Hayden Sherman truly shines in this segment with an impressive growth and experimentation in this first installment. One of Sherman's standout strengths is character design, capturing each character in a stylized way that really highlights their individuality and personality. With Diana's design, for instance, it's clear that she embodies a gentle giant vibe, appearing both large and empowering. Sherman's paneling style is packed with dynamic action shots and irregular panels, which gives their art a lot of creative flair. Jordi Belair's coloring enhances this even further by perfectly complementing the action, experimentation, and emotional moments. Together, this artistic duo crafts a visually striking story that fits seamlessly into the gritty atmosphere of the Absolute Universe. Overall, for me, Absolute Wonder Woman 1 is a strong yet straightforward start to what promises to be an exciting new series. Sherman and Belair's art is truly top-notch, 
and Thompson's writing has never been stronger. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the creative team introduces more familiar characters into Diana's story, and how this version of Wonder Woman adapts to her new city and world. What did you guys think about the second story of the Absolute Universe? Let us know about your thoughts and opinions in the comment box below.